Hello and welcome to Geeky Remy here live at MCM Comic Con November 2018 with me, Lee. Hello. So we're going to do our usual, have a wander around, see what cool things we can find. Lee, is there anything in particular you're looking forward to this year? Uh, I'm very interested in the Nintendo stand this year. Uh, especially, I'm curious about the Smash Brothers demo because hoping that it's bigger than the EGX one. Yeah, it looks, it looks pretty decent. I mean, there's yeah. a big Splatoon stand as well. Yes, yeah, the big Splatoon tournament. I believe it's the... Um, UK finals of the tournament yeah. or something like that, so that'd be interesting to see. It looks really cool. Some brilliant guests here. We've got David Morrissey, yep. um, known for Walking Dead, mm -hmm. and Doctor Who, of course. Yep. And some brilliant people. Jason O'Mara, we've just spoken to. Yep. Um, doing the Batman, uh, Man in the High Castle, mm -hmm. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so some brilliant guests here. Yep. We've sent Callan off to go and get some footage in the press room, so yep. catch that a little bit later. And for now, we shall catch you shortly. Yep. See you later. One of the joys of the MCM Comic Con is they have an amazing range of smaller press and independent comics publishers. Uh, we're going to hand over and have a quick chat with some of them now. Hi there, uh, my name's Colin Matheson uh, from Accent UK Comics. Uh, we're one of the UK's uh, uh, independent publishers. We've been uh, um, producing comics of our own for about 15 years now. Um, and in that period, a whole range of comics we produced, uh, Western noir, about follows adventures of Josiah Black in the American Wild West, who has a special pair of goggles, and through the goggles he sees certain people as monsters. So he starts hunting them down, but because no one else can see what he sees, the local sheriff starts hunting him down. That's Western noir. Uh, we also do some steampunk comics, Enter the Asylum, um, and Stevenson's Robot. And historical adventure comics is my specialty. I'm a big fan of history, so uh, my stories tend to be historical based, but they have a twist to them. If you want to know why the British lost uh, the, 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 during the Zulu Wars at Isanwana, uh, you might find out that there's a, a, a secret there during the solar eclipse. Um, uh, the comics have been produced for a number of years, work with like Steve Bizet, we produced Swamp Thing with Alan Moore. We're uh, very happy to work with Le Alan Moore's daughter, Leah Moore, and her husband, John Repian, and artists like Fraser Irvin, Mark Buckingham, and various other people over that period. Uh, we do a lot of shows uh, we're here at Birmingham today, but we're, um, we do a lot of MCM shows throughout the whole UK uh, and elsewhere over in Europe. Uh, and the comics you can find us on the website at accentukcomics.com or more information about how we produce comics on my uh, personal blog, momentofadventure.blogspot. Uh, um, happy to be here, happy to find out more. Thank you very much. Uh, my name's Mike Garley, I'm a writer, so I've written uh, The Kill Screen, which is basically what happened to our world if Putro is a computer game has infected mankind, how do people survive? So it's been described a bit like Black Mirror meets Walking Dead, but no one knew it was depressing. Um, so that's one comic I have. Another one is Samurai Slasher, which is kind of like based on a fake 80s slash film about a samurai that goes on a killing spree. It's supposed to be fairly, um, fairly fun, fairly tongue-in-cheek. Uh, it's an anthology comic, so there's lots of short stories that make up like a larger arc. Uh, I've also got a new book out called 32 Kills, which is a one-shot that I co-created with Andy Clift, 
and it's like a noir revenge, high paced, lots of panels, ultra violent, uh, short story. So that's everything that I have here. Um, you can find it online at mikegarley.com. I'm on Twitter at mikegarley because apparently I can't think of very original Twitter handles. Um, but yeah, that's that's me basically. Hi, I'm Jess Taylor. I'm a comic artist and illustrator, local to Birmingham. I've done quite a bit of work since I joined the MCM circuit and most people know me for a brief stint on Adventure Time a few months back. Um, I generally do covers and book covers and I'll have a couple of comics coming out next year but my work is very graphic-y, pop art, think Samurai Jack meets Transistor the video game and you'll definitely have like my exact aesthetic. I like pink, I like blue, and I like doing everything with it. Um, but you can totally check me out on Twitter. I'm My handle is at D-E-U-X-D-E-Dell, which is doodle. <laughs> and you can find me there pretty much all hours of the day. I like screaming into the void, sometimes it yells back. You can also find me on Tumblr under the same name. And I am also on Instagram at Jess Taylor Arts. Hello, uh, my name is Fraser Irving. I'm a comic book artist and illustrator from London. Uh, I've been drawing comics professionally since 2000, but I've been drawing them as an artist and a general round, all, all round creator since 1988. So I'm that old, kids. So, what do I do? Um, back in the old days, I did this. I used to draw it on paper, and I did black and white line work, mainly for 2000 AD, doing stuff like Judge Dredd, Judge Death, and so forth. Then I discovered the computer back in 2006, and I got a Cintiq and I became fully digital. That's when I started doing computer-generated artwork as my main output. So what I've been doing over the past 20 years, I've been drawing for 2000 AD, DC Comics, Marvel Comics, Dark Horse Comics, you name it, I've probably worked for them. I've drawn Batman, the X-Men, Iron Man, again, you name it, I've probably drawn them at least once. These days, I'm, as well as doing that, I'm also doing my own sketchbooks, as I'm demonstrating here. You can find these and my crowdfunding campaign with Unbound.com, playful inversions where the artist comes up with the pictures first and then the writers come up with the stories. Brilliant idea. Yes, these can all be found online. Uh, FraserIrving.com, it's F-R-A-Z-E-R-I-R-V-I-N-G, thank you. Or you find me on Instagram, FraserIrving, Facebook, FraserIrving. Or just go to Unbound.com and look for playful inversions and you'll find all my wonderful goodies there. Uh, I'm MCM, Birmingham, and it's very crowded, and I'm looking forward to getting a drink soon. Thank you. main attractions of any MCM show is always the fantastic range of media guests. We're going to have a quick little montage now to show some of the people that we spoke to. If you want to check out any of the audio from the interviews, go to geekybrummy.podium.co. All the episodes will be on there, or you can check out the podcast stream on YouTube, or on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify. We're all over the place. Just type in Geeky Brummy and you'll find us. Long ago, I started being voice of the animated Batman, yeah. um, which is obviously like a big legacy of many people before you. Yeah. How is that in terms of um, the response to that, and how you go about that in making yourself sort of stand out and um, compared to such greats that have done it before? Yeah, it's one of those weird things. I think I think it's you're going down a blind alley if you try to set out to stand out. Um, from from such an amazing array of. of uh, of successful actors who have played the role. So <clears throat> what I tried to do is just figure out what I was going to do and try to do it to the best of my ability and uh, rely on that really to, to uh, distinguish me from, from any other Batman. Um, I suppose that I'm Irish helped, but obviously nobody wants to hear an Irish Batman, or at least that's what I was told. <laughs> I would definitely like to hear one. Absolutely. <laughs> How does it feel having people that still sort of recognize you as that role so many years on 
it, it's quite unbelievable. I've got three things in my career. One is Doctor Who, which was 32 years ago. One is Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which was 40 years ago. And I saw the director, John Irving, who's done a lot of other marvellous stuff uh, as well. And Only Fools and Horses, which was 1992 or so. Mm -hmm. I'd never have thought, especially Doctor Who, mm. from I'd be here all these years later. I've been to America about four times, and Glasgow, all over the place. I'd never have believed it possible. Well, the same as Tinker Taylor. Mm. I still get nice little repeats for all the stuff I did, because I've done all the John Le Carre books as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's quite unbelievable. Uh, uh, my, I've done a lot of other things. And then Only Fools and Horses, which I did eight days of work on. Well, you, said, you were just in one episode of that, I, you? Yes, one episode. And I, but I was the one who found the watch. Yes. So it's absolutely, utterly iconic. Uh, well, I would say that I was, um, I, was sitting, I was sitting outside of my gym in Los Angeles, and I got a call from my manager and agent, and they said... This is a really great opportunity, uh, so don't screw it up. Um, and so I said, okay, cool. So I went in and I auditioned for casting directors. And after that, I auditioned um, with Bruce and with, uh, um, I auditioned with Bruce and for Sam Raimi. And ultimately, uh, I remember auditioning my last and final time and I was in a room about this big and there were two of us. It was me and some other guy competing for the role. Usually there's like three or four, but it was just me and this other guy. So it was a 50-50 chance of my life changing, <laughs> right? And um, Sam, they put us in separate rooms, and Sam came in and said, hey, um, you know, this is just like a formality. Let's just go in there and like, you know, show them that you got this, and I just want to make sure you're okay with, you know, doing stunts and being covered in blood all the time, and you know, is that something that you are okay with? And I said, you know, Mr. Ramey, I, I want to be covered in as much blood as possible, and I want to run through the wilderness of New Zealand naked from deadites. Is that something that we can achieve? <laughs> <laughs> Almost exclusively, but I go yeah. right back to the, the time of studio TV back in the yeah. 70s and so on, mm -hmm. when actually it was more like theatre, because you rehearsed for three weeks yeah. Yeah. on the outside. And then you went in for this crucial three hours when the yeah. lines were open and all the rest and it was of all it. Live. You, gave, you had one shot at everything. You missed live TV. And then. if you made a mistake, you had to go back to the back entire to scene control. again. Yeah. Not yeah. just a bit, because it was yeah. on electronic tape. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Except that the, the floor manager um, had a, a, a cable Sorry, with yeah. like an old <laughs> bell push on it. Yeah. And if you dried up, he would push, he would push that oh, yeah. and that would deaden the sound giving time to give a prompt to the actor. Right. If right. you didn't take it properly, then exactly as they describe, you'd have to start again. It's also quite, it was not unusual in that, that sort of circumstance when an actor would dry, that he would spontaneously burst out with what should we call an expletive. Yeah. Which of course is not so good on the finish, yeah. if he's playing the kid or something like that. <laughs>joining us on the Geeky Brummy MCM Comic Con special. Uh, Callum, what has been your highlight of the um, I mean, I've sort of enjoyed it all really, but I really like the um, Fallout bus. Um, and also getting to play on um, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Ben here. What about you? For me, it's going to play uh, Smash Brothers and seeing the Splatoon tournament going down. So. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. And check us out on geekybromy.com, Facebook, Twitter, 
and make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Um, uh, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, share on everything, and uh, we'll see you next time. That was the most randomly beautiful thing I have seen all weekend so far.